the way Bertha is circling Rochester and Jane while they're having the stay speech. Yes. It's incredible. Bertha is singing. Rochester is giving his speech. And what I think, an inc- we're going to talk about Rochester, but I think an incredibly sympathetic Rochester in this moment. He is on the ground. They, Jane and Rochester are sitting on the ground. He is devastated and he seems younger than any Rochester has ever seemed to me, even though he's mm-hmm. not young. Mm-hmm. But he's like almost curled up on the floor next to Jane trying to explain what it was like to be a young man while Bertha stands over him, Mm -hmm. looks down at him and sings about the fact that like about those, I don't have the lyrics of that song, but like Mm -hmm. she's singing at him almost like they're in a duet where he's sharing his story. Bertha only ever sings in this production. She does not speak any words, but Mm -hmm. she sings. Yeah. And there's a moment when Rochester says, something pretty awful about Bertha and Jane comes back and says, how could you say that about your wife? Which I do believe is in the book. Yeah. He says something um, about her and she's like, how can you hate her? So like, she can't help being mad. And he's like, I don't mm-hmm. hate her because she's mad. And then he goes into, yeah, the details of how kind of cruel she was during their yeah. marriage. And, but it's this moment. I think those are the moments of interaction that we have between Jane and Bertha that, I think Jane sympathizes. I genuinely believe that Jane sympathizes with Bertha in general, but mm-hmm. I also think this leans into that more than I've seen in adaptions. Yeah. It's incredible. The vulnerability of them like sitting on the floor. I agree with that. I thought that was great. Um, we've seen something similar in our other most recent adaption, which is the autobiography in mm-hmm. the the web series version. That too, they're sitting on the floor of her bedroom having mm-hmm. this conversation. Uh, so it's it it's cool to see that that is something that that kind of body language, I think, speaks to our modern audience and mm. maybe always has, but like it's not something that we've always seen like displayed that way until in recent adaptions. So it's curious. Well, and I think there's something about so often Rochester is in motion while Jane is sitting during this. Mm -hmm. And there's something about him breaking down on the floor that leans harder into that vulnerability that we talk about is so critical to this scene. Yeah. That Rochester has to be vulnerable, that this is him putting his whole heart out there Mm -hmm. that I think is incredibly done. So another thing that I want to talk about that you touched on with the fact of as the scene is happening and Bertha is literally looming over them, uh, this is something that is used in like just theater direction in general, but um, stages and sets that utilize levels uh, Mm -hmm. to convey like power dynamics. Mm -hmm. I first came across this in watching the behind the scenes of an absolutely unbelievable film called um, Far From Heaven. Very sad. So if you're not into sad stories, maybe don't watch it, but it's beautiful. But they had done this movie set similar to a stage set where they're like, Mm -hmm. when we're showing a power imbalance, the person who has the power will always be one level above the other individual so that and it's kind of ways of conveying okay is this person just physically like mm-hmm. standing up there or are they the one with the power the control in the situation looking down on others so it's a very cool visual storytelling technique and mm-hmm. i saw that immediately in this like stage and i was like ooh, they're gonna do cool things with that and they did <laughs> yeah 